Hey guys, and welcome back to Pokemon X. In this instalment of our post-game video series thing, we're going to be hunting down some legendaries. The first one lies deep within Terminus Cave, and I did say we'd be coming back here in the post-game, so uh, I keep my promises, I guess. Uh, we've got a bit of a ways to uh, go before we reach our first uh, legendary encounter. So, Hell Dragon, what say you to a brief chat about Legendaries of Jen's past? That sounds like the perfect topic to fill up about four minutes with, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay then, so uh, sit back as I basically just list off all the legendary Pokemon generation by generation. In Generation 1, you had the legendary birds, you know, Zapdos, Articuno, Moltres, Unodos, Tress. Uh, you got the Mew duo of uh, Mew and Mewtwo. Generation 2 had the legendary beasts, or dogs, really, although I thought they were cats at first. Entei, uh, Raikal, Suisun. The Tower duo, Ho and Lugia. And then you had Celebi. Generation 3, you had the Reggie trio, you know, the Golems, Reggie Rock, Reggie Ice, Reggie Steel. You had the Eon duo, Latios, Latias. Got the weather trio of Groudon, Kyor, and Rayquaza, who uh, keeps order. Jirachi, you have Deoxys, who I never got to fight, and I'm kind of pissy because his theme is extremely underrated. Flash forward to Gen 4, where there's like a legendary explosion, there's like 13 in this. <laughs> they all got hit by gamma rays and became legendaries. You've got the late Guardian trio, the Creation trio, Dialga, Palkia, Giratina, the Luna duo, Cresselia and Darkrai, you've got uh, Manaphy and Fion. Heatran, okay. Regigigas, pretty good. Shaman, meh. And of course, your god and mine, Arceus. Justice, justice. Generation 5, Victini, Swords of Justice, kinda meh. Forces of Nature, I'm just reading off a list at this point, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Tau Trio, or Forces of Nature, they're okay. The Tau Trio are actually Kyurim, uh, Zekrom. And uh, Reshiram, I kind of forgot the uh, name of the last one there for a second. Malawetta, Genesect, uh, flash forward to Gen 6, Xerneas, Evoltol, Diancy, and the one we're about to fight, Z-Guard. Z-Guard should be pretty interesting. And here he is, send your big head. Incoming message from the big giant head. Zadar. There he is, folks, the very first Dragon and Ground legendary, Z-Guard, the Order Pokemon. I was looking up Z-Guard here, and uh, considering that the other legendaries, you know, Xerneas and Yvitol, uh, are callbacks to ideas from Norse mythology, it's said that Z-Guard is basically drawing inspiration from Jormungandr, the Midgar Serpent, and also maybe Nidhogger. Oh. <laughs> Jesus. I don't know if I'm saying that right. <laughs> the uh, serpent that coils around the roots at Yggdrasil and basically gnaws on them. Now, you'll notice it's got like all these hexagons on its body. Uh, it's more like an abstract idea of a Pokemon than an organic creature. They apparently say that they're based on ribose and deoxyribose molecules, which also uh, comes into play in terms of DNA and various DNA concepts. It's basically the building blocks of the DNA double helix. So it all kind of ties together in this interesting way when you look deeply enough into it. Well, if it wasn't the Norse mythology that kind of blew my mind, it was uh, the actual science of, remember, double F in science. <laughs> uh, let's have a little look-see uh, what Z-Guard has competitive-wise. Oh, it's got a rather nifty special ability called Aura Break, which actually reverses the effects of fairy and dark type auras making it a, a, a great counter to uh, Xerneas and Evoltal, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, it also uh, calls back to its role as the Pokemon of Order. Basically, when those two are fighting, Z-Guard is the one that comes in and tells his kids to shut up, pretty much. Well, not quite. That was Rayquaza. This guy is more like... What's the uh, group that, uh, you know, protests people fucking up the environment? Um... Hippies? Humans! <laughs> <laughs> I like how you went with hippies, I went with humans, as if we're all meant to care about them, but the hippies care just a little bit more. <laughs> uh, what else have we got on my little uh, notes thing here? Okay, it's got typical type-specific moves like Earthquake and Dragon Pulse. It's also got a move called Camouflage, which is pretty cool, as it, uh, in the words of Bulbapedia, changes the Pokemon's type to a type corresponding to the battlefield terrain. The type caused by each environment changes between games, as does the environments recognised. Yeah, and that's actually also tying again into its role as a Pokemon who helps maintain the ecosystem after its kids fucked everything up. 
<laughs> right. It's also got an exclusive move called Land's Wrath, which it learns at level 26. I don't think I've ever seen it used it. Um, it may have forgotten it at this point, to be honest, so you have to uh, relearn it in Dendermill Town once you catch it. It also uh, apparently has some secret moves that nobody has seen yet, but apparently people have hacked the game and found these additional moves hidden away that Z-Guard should be able to learn. Yeah, when they hacked it, I think they were attributed to uh, Volcanion, which is a uh, as of yet unreleased legendary for X and Y, and uh, it had a move called Thousand Waves, it had a move called Thousand Arrows, and they were both ground type. It would not something you'd expect from a fire water Pokemon. So uh, maybe in the next game, maybe not Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby. After like X and Y two, I guess we'll see uh, Z Guard having a bigger role in the story and such. So are uh, you gonna name it anything stupid? Nope. <laughs> Fluffy, destroyer of worlds. Z-Guard! <laughs> Call it Freezer. There, done. <laughs> it's good that you've captured the uh, Pokemon of order. You know, the whole ecosystem is breaking down, the world has gone to pot, because somebody wouldn't take the highly essential Pokemon out of the fucking computer. I, I probably should have told you this before we started recording. I actually changed my username. I'm now Lawrence Free. God, I hate you so much. You have no idea. <laughs> Even as a joke, I just hate you so much for that. Okay, now we have to uh, venture to Snowbell See, We're uh, actually uh, heading to the uh, Pokemon Village, or the Hind Village, whatever it's called. I believe the guy standing uh, watch in front of the Unknown Dungeon is gone now. Apparently, as becoming champion, forced his hand. Yeah, you know, he's been standing there all this time. We finally become champion. Oh, thank God, my lunch break is here, and he finally left. But first, uh, <laughs> we're going to justify the existence of the Pokemon nurses a little bit. Yeah, when we get, like, a portable version of this, you're done. You know, it's weird, because you have to go to your Pokemon Center to heal your Pokemon fully, but you've met NPCs who basically, I guess, spray you, and it automatically heals your Pokemon. Even plays the same sound effect. Duh, 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 duh. So I assume we've got some black market technology already out. <laughs> Just the, the thought of Xerneas chilling in a box makes me laugh. He says, hey Xerneas, how you doing? Puny human! Once you release me from my imprisonment, I will bring you terror unlike a witch of anything you have ever experienced. Alright, that's cool. Hey Zygarde, what's up? Just keeping order in the box, I guess. Good. <laughs> that's all you'll be doing. His hidden ability uh, organizes Pokemon from A to Z. I know I've got a Master Ball, but uh, it never hurts to be prepared, and uh, you can never go wrong with a bevy of Ultra Balls at your side. Well, I have a feeling that even all the Special Balls you bring to the uh, next Legendary we're going to be chasing down wouldn't really help you. Sounds really depressing in this town, don't you think? What with the music? It's not really depressing as much as it is down B. I'd rather go to a town that was more hip and cool and upbeat, you know what I'm saying? Apologies for the jump cut there. Uh, I had a feeling you guys wouldn't want to sit through us trudging through the forest again. I'm not apologizing, that was in fact our stand power. You're only going to need Surf to uh, reach the Unknown Dungeon, so uh, don't worry about a Pokemon having a Waterfall or anything. There is an area in the village where you can use Waterfall and get an item, but uh, we're hunting legendaries, not Pokeballs filled with items. Yeah, I'm really glad that you only need Surf to get over here, because I never really liked, uh, even in the first game, you know, of the Unknown Dungeon, using all of these different HMs. I guess that was the best proof of your worth as a trainer, but at the same time, you know, somebody had to be the HM slave and you didn't want to bring him along, so there you go. Remember how complex the Unknown Dungeon was in the first game? Oh yeah. It's basically this. It's just a cavern now. Well, you can't really call it a dungeon, can you? It's more like an unknown hole in the wall that nobody wants to walk into. The Unknown Room! <laughs> My unknown basement! Did you guys hear about that Genesect movie shit? They cast a Mewtwo, and it wasn't me, and it was a girl! <laughs> Damn Hollywood! I don't think it's ever stated who actually created Mewtwo. It was just a group of scientists. You know, I didn't see any Team Rocket or Team Plasma logos emblazoned on their lab coats, so uh, who knows, really? There's not really much to say about Mewtwo. We all sort of know the drill by now, but the different thing about Mewtwo in this version 
is that it has access to two uh, Mega Evolutions, depending on the version you had. Much like Charizard. Mega Mewtwo X is like this big, bulky motherfucker. Uh, Mega Mewtwo Y was featured in the movie as more focused towards speed, and Mega Mewtwo Z goes to 100% power and was killed by Goku on Planet Namek. Oh. <laughs> I saw it coming, but I couldn't stop it! <laughs> Uh, Mega Mewtwo X is actually a psychic and fighting type, so I honestly won't be surprised to see it pop up in uh, Pokémon the Fires. Yeah, that would be pretty interesting, actually. I wonder what kind of roster they're going to use. That would be really fascinating, I think, to find that out. Well, uh, you got Lucario and Blaziken, they're basically confirmed. Harry Armor, maybe Horlucha for sure. Even if we want a Pokémon in there that shouldn't be in there who isn't normally a fighting type, we'll just change him to a fighting type anyway. Fennekin, it's going to be part fighting, just so it can show up. Badoof, now it's your time to shine. <laughs> just get a little boxing glove on it, it's so cute! Now, I'd just like to point out, I did not edit this fight down. Why would you like to point that out? Well, pay attention to how many Pokeballs I've used. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah! Uh. Ah! <sighs> He didn't put up a fight at all! I think at this point, you know, you've caught him so many times throughout the game, so he's just like, You know what? Fuck it. Let's do it. Why not? <laughs> Can I see your champion card? Yeah, that checks out. Whatever. Do -do 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 -do. Yeah, he has to check your papers. Alright, let me see. Uh, uh, when did you get this license? Uh, this year? Alright, uh, it's just... You didn't have any tickets recently. Uh, looks like your keys are in order. Alright, let's uh, start a working relationship. Pokemon has just become so formulaic at this point. Now, I find it kind of odd that an artificially created Pokemon, one who most definitely wasn't around during the uh, Calusian Wars, has a Megastone, but it kind of all, you know, feeds into the theory that maybe uh, Mr. Fuji helped to develop Mewtwo's Megastones, and maybe Charizard's as well, because as uh, we all know from Pokemon Origins, uh, Mr. Fuji gives Red the uh, Megastone for Charizard X, but uh, we're getting a bit too into fan trivia here, so let's take a look at the third legendary for this part. This is a roaming Pokemon. Say hello to Zapdos. Zapdos, don't you think we should have been able to see him on the overworld, considering how fucking big he is? Right. The uh, roaming Pokemon that you actually run into, who only appears after you beat the Elite Four, by the way, and you're going to have to bump into it a few times, as I'll get to in a second, is dependent on which starter you picked. I picked uh, Fennekin, so uh, I get Zapdos. Let me just uh, go through here. Uh, do -do -do -do. If you chose Chespin, uh, you'll get a chance to catch Articuno, and if you chose... Uh, Froki, you'll get Moltres. The difference between this kind of roaming challenge, uh, as opposed to, you know, other ones in the series, is that you have to run into this Pokemon, after the first time, about nine or ten times. Oh my god, really? You have to chase it all over Kalos, essentially playing grab-ass with this legendary <laughs> behemoth. Nine or ten times. It doesn't sound tedious, but let me tell you, when you have to go into the Pokedex manually, because you can't assign it to the bottom screen, oh, let me tell you, friend, it gets tedious very fucking quick. Yeah, man, I believe it. And Man, that reminds me of uh, when I actually encountered, uh, uh, what was it? It was Raikou. I encountered him in uh, Pokemon Silver, and I basically had to play grab ass with him too. I tried over and over to catch him, but I never really succeeded. I guess if I was recording commentary for YouTube back then, I would have made more of an effort to finish the job too. Well, uh, sadly for a young Hell Dragon of the ye old days of uh, pre YouTube, that was not possible. Now, uh, as I said, you have to encounter this Pokemon nine or ten times, but it does eventually settle as we can see by this giant red glowing spot on the map in the Sea Spirit's Den, which up until now has been basically empty, so I guess some Zapdos just got tired and decided to rent it. You know, I'm wondering how the Pogedex is able to track this particular Zapdos to that area. Did we put, like, a tracker on it during the fight before it ran away? Yeah, like a spider tracer or something. <laughs> no, no, the Zapdos is connected to the internet, and we've been able to track it through the Wi-Fi. That makes perfect sense. It's the source of all our electricity in our world, but, you know, those connections work both ways. Yeah, you know, we gotta thank Zapdos for doing its part in uh, giving us electricity by catching it and then putting it in the computer forever. <laughs> right, it's gotta power that PC until the end of time, right? That's true. Even when the bombs hit, even if the ultimate weapon went off and destroyed the entire world or most of it, that computer will still be running thanks to our Zapdos. 
Obviously, I'm not going to make you guys sit through as encountering Zapdos like 10 or 11 times. After like maybe the seventh time, it kind of loses its luster. So uh, I just showed you uh, maybe like the last couple. Love this theme. Oh yeah, yeah, it actually sounds really nice, I agree. It's chill. I've always wanted to go out riding on a boat, but uh, we're veering dangerously close to my hopes and dreams, and I can't allow you to know those, because once you know them, you know me, and I can't be having that. Guess what? I've been on a boat before you have. Well, was, uh, when I went on holiday to Italy, I was piss scared to get on a boat. What, really? Like, did you go near Venice? Uh, it was it was somewhere in Italy. My mom's a massive Italianophile. I would totally go to Venice and just kind of take those riverways, cause you see those all the time. Hell, we've even seen uh, inspirations of those uh, places in the Pokemon movies. They look so cool, and I totally want to go there someday. This has been the life and times of Hellfire Comes. Just walk in inside his house, wreck his shit. Kaka! Bitch, I noticed you've been crawling around in my house, and I'm not too appreciative of that. I've come with a restraining order. It's gonna kill you. So now, this time, we can actually fight him, and he actually takes it like a man. Probably not the best Pokemon to lead with, but uh, <laughs> I've never want to admit my mistakes, and, you know, Ice Beam is good against the flying type. Even if it does fuck all damage here, since its stats are so high. Now, it's kind of weird, because apparently Zapdos reportedly appears only during a thunderstorm, and it lives among thunderclouds. I don't know why it's decided to chill in this cave. I think it would have been really cool if we went to a flying solid cloud fortress of some kind to fight Zapdos. That would have been awesome. But, mate, that would require them to create new post-game areas. I know, right? It's just like... You want me to sit there and do all this work, and I'm just not feeling it, man. You better just go to the same areas you've been to before, all right? And you better appreciate it. Since it is an electric type, and electric types can no longer suffer paralysis, Zapdos is kind of the hardest of the uh, legendary birds to catch, but other than that, it's just your standard legendary fight, really. Also, I like how it has Rain Dance to help enhance its electric attacks. That's a neat touch, and also calls back to its whole uh, origins. Uh, where it's involved in thunderstorms and things like that. Loving this remix, this Gen 1 remix. It is quite kicking, if you will. Man, come on, get in your new home so you can't bring the weather anymore. Yeah, you're gonna have to try something with a bit more bite. Yeah, that's why he's trying to catch that, though, so he won't have a rainy day anymore. How's it raining inside of a cave? Y you know? I think we should have asked that question first, I agree. <laughs> what, is there a hole in the roof or something? Well, I, it's Zapdos. I'm pretty sure he just drilled a hole in the cave roof with its amazingly powerful lightning. You watch, it's going to come down to a timer ball again. Come on, come on, you knew you would. Oh, come on. Gengar's like, I don't even care, I'm just going to jig. Thanks, I actually needed a shower. You saved me a job. Oh, that's good. All my clothes are now wet. Thanks. It's really weird that even the flying Pokemon like Zapdos here still gets that little circle of land for when it's in the arena. There we go. Bueno. Nice. Words meaning good in French. <laughs> um... Shit, what are some words being good in French? Boy, bien. That's Spanish! <laughs> what are you even doing? You're full of merde! That's shit in French, that's you. Oh, if only I knew that during my many watchings of The Mask. <laughs> How come its uh, text box in the Pokédex is blood red? <laughs> well, uh, it kind of uh, killed the person who was making that entry. <laughs> Makes sense, I guess. Aw, oh, Greninja looks so sad on the bottom screen. Dead! <laughs> uh, no, I don't think we're going to run into any legendaries on the sand, unless there's like a giant crab or something. That'll do it for this installment of our post-game adventures. There's other Colossian legendaries to catch, but for the time being, they're not available to us Westerners, and uh, in a couple of cases, not available at all right now, so I guess we'll have to come back at a later date to capture the likes of Deancey, Hooper, and Volcanion. Please join us next time when we start a rather nifty side quest and meet up with a guy who's one hell of a looker. 
See you then.